Good evening, afternoon, or morning, everyone. My name is Doleorn, and this is the next video in my Enchanter EverQuest AA guide. Just wanted to say hi to everyone and make a small announcement that after I'm done going over all the expansions AAs, I'm actually going to make another Enchanter on Kesik Duel starting at level 51 when the AAs start. And I will be showing a demonstration of how some of the early AA can make a big difference. And this is not going to be part of my level 1 to whatever max level is at that point, max challenge. Which I am probably going to wait to start until I see if there's going to be a new time lock regression server. But this is just going to be... I'm going to power level an enchanter up to level 50, 51, and then start getting them some AA uh, without the auto grant turned on. And then I'll show you like the speed difference between the run speed AAs and the direct damage like Destructive Fury and Fury of Magic and what difference that makes on the class. So I just wanted to make that announcement real fast. So... With that said, on to the guide. So, like I said, this is for the Omens of War expansion. As you can see here, a lot of the ones that are coming out in this expansion are the ones that are for the other trade skills, not just Jewel Craft, which we talked about during the Shadows of Luklan, or Lucklin expansion. This is Ones you can do for research, baking, blacksmithing, brewery, fletching, pottery, tailoring, and a nice AA called Savage, uh, sorry, Salvage, that allows you to have a chance to recover an item even on a failure. It is a small chance to recover an item, and there's random which item it's going to be, so it could be a uh, flask of water or it could be the most expensive item in the combine. There's no way to know, but it is still a very useful AA to get. I will be talking about these, but I'm only going to go over them in basics because and it only applies if you're doing trade skills for making plat or if you're doing a quest that requires a trade skills like the uh, shawl quest or anything like that. So I will be talking about them, but not going into a whole lot of detail, and I'm not going to give any specifics on when you should get them, because that is completely subjective on if you're doing trade skills or not. So, for instance, the Arcane Tongues has three ranks at the very beginning in Omens of War at level 59, and that decreases your chance to fail research by 10%, 25%, and 50%. That's to for a total of all three ranks of 18 AA. Then the same thing is for bakery mastery. It reduces your chance to fill a banking combine, a baking combine by 10, 25, and 50 percent for 18 AA total for three ranks. Same thing with blacksmithing, except for obviously it's for smithing, brewery, tailoring, fletching. All those are similar. The only one that is slightly different is going to be the Tinkering Mastery, because that's for gnomes only. And so at this stage, there is only one rank of that, and that is to decrease the chance of failing a Tinkering combined by 10%. So now that that's over with, there is the next one is going to be Color Shock, which is right here. It says, when able, this passive ability grants you a chance with a 5% bonus to trigger Color Shock Stun 1 on attackers when struck in melee combat, which can stun a level 73 or lower target for 4 seconds. Basically, it just allowed, it gives it a chance to where you have a chance to get a Rudolph or a stun, or a mez off. It buys you a little bit of time for four seconds. So that is definitely an important AA. It is not the first one I would recommend getting, but I will go into that in a little bit. 
There are five more ranks of combat agility and combat stability, which I recommend getting. Those are five AA apiece. The first rank increases your chance to avoid melee attacks by 26% up to 32% at the last rank of Omens of War combat agility. And then combat stability increases your AC self cap, which negates a little bit of the damage you take when you are hit. And that goes at 27% at the first rank in Omens of War up to 35% at the last rank of Omens of War. So then there's also Companion Suspension. It basically allows you to suspend your pet. It uh, doesn't save the pet if you die or zone, but if you're in the zone it allows you to basically have two pets kind of at the same time where you can have a pet summoned, get it buffs, and mage toy weapons, and then you suspend it and cast another pet and do the same thing. That way when the first one dies, you all you have to do is hit the suspend pet again and it will bring the first pet back out. So again, it's nice. It allows your pets to receive group buffs. So if you're using your summoned pet in raids, it will get all the buffs that the regular players get. Like the druid buffs, cleric buffs, paladin buffs, all the buffs. So in this expansion, we're introduced to the Delayed Death AA. It gives you a passive ability to basically stay alive a little bit longer. It gives you some extra hit points when you're knocked unconscious before you technically die. So there are five ranks in Omens of War. They are three AA each rank, and each one increases your negative HP by 50 points, so the first rank will get you to negative 50 before you die, and then the last rank in Omens of War will bring you to negative 250 before you die. Then there's three ranks of Destructive Fury. It increases the critical nuke damage by 107% at the first Omens of War rank, that is 3 AA. Then the second rank, which is 6 AA at 68 increases your critical nuke damage by 115%, and the one at 70 for 9 AA increases your critical nuke damage by 125% of base damage. Then there are five ranks of Discordant Defiance, which I can read here for you. It raises the maximum that your cold, disease, fire, magic, and poison resistances can be increased to with items and spells by five points. If you're a raider, this is a pretty good AA. Again, not the first AA I would get, but it definitely is a good AA to help increase your chances of resisting spells by the raid mobs. Then there's also going to be five ranks of Expansive Mind that came out in Omens of War and increases the maximum that your mana regeneration can be raised with items by one point. And that is one point per rank. There are five ranks at five AA each, starting at level 66. So at level 70, after you spend 25 AA for the five ranks, you increase your mana regen cap by five. And then there's going to be another rank of innate lung capacity. Again, you can get this if you're uh, basically out of spending AA on anything useful, but it is definitely not a top priority. For one thing, a lot of gear starting around this area has Feyrune on the helmet, and Feyrune gives you automatic ultra vision, see and viz, and also water breathing. So there's also going to be five ranks of innate regeneration, starting at level 66 to 70. Increases your current HP by an extra one per tick. And when I say per tick, that's every six seconds. So, and that's three AA per rank. So that will bring it to 15 AA. And that will bring you from, basically allow you to increase your HP regen up to 10 per tick at level 70. There are three more ranks of Mastery of the Past. Uh, 
uh, starting at 67, 68, and 69. Each of them are 5 AA a rank. It allows you to not fizzle when you cast a spell. It's level 62, 64, or 66. Again, useful, but not top of the list, but definitely useful. Next is Mind Over Matter. It is three ranks, and that allows you to absorb 50% of incoming damage with your mana rather than your health for up to 10 hits for 15 minutes. And it is required to have Eldritch Rune at level 3 before you can train in this. So basically, if you know you're going to be hit and hit hard you could hit this and basically half of the damage will be taken out of your mana until you either the mob stops hitting you or casting spells at you or the tank uh, gets aggro whatever comes first or if you're able to run away but if you know that you have, will have a chance to regen the mana back or have a chance to use gather mana this is a nice way to just stay alive also gives you a chance to basically ruin yourself and ruin tank for a little bit. Just keep in mind that that will generate aggro. The next one is Menomic Retention. And this is going to be the one I actually suggest you start with first because it gives you an extra spell on your spell gem bar to where instead of 8 spells you can have 9 mem. So that's at level 55 and that is 3 AA and that is a game changer so that is the first AA that you need to get and it doesn't matter if it's even what class any class and cast spells and can get this needs to get this one first then there's mystical attuning there's five ranks of that and basically what that lets you do is increases the number of mystical effects that can affect you at once by one so with five ranks, that basically you have five more buffs on you than you can have right now. Because right now there is a buff cap up to this point. And even at TOV where I'm at on my raid enchanter, I think the buff limit is around 45 to 50 buffs before you get buff locked. Somewhere around there. Like I haven't spent the time to count, but... That's basically what it is. And then there's Lactambulate. It is a activated ability. And when activated, mesmerizes a level 73 or lower target for one minute. So basically, this is like an emergency mess. So if you just get a ton of resist on your normal mess for some reason, even with Tash, you can use this to buy a minute for you to get control for group to kill the other mobs whatever but this is an emergency mess that you can use later on you won't use this so much because our messes do get a modifier that allows them to stick easier but this is not bad for an emergency mess again not high on my list but it is there and it is useful and there's going to be five more ranks of planar power for five AA per rank. This increases your base stat cap by five per rank. So at the last rank at 70 increases the total base stat cap uh, by 50. And that's if you have all 10 ranks up to this point. And let's see, there are going to be couple other ones a veterans enhancement is actually a level 50 but you can get that and it doesn't cost any AA it's a passive ability that increases your maximum health and mana and your attack power and all that so you can get that at level 50 but only once the omens of war expansion actually goes live I'm fairly certain anyway it's been a while since I went that far back but so my recommendation for the AA that you need to get and in the order, as I said before, number one AA to get when you hit Omens of War at level 55, and you're past level 60, 55, I mean, get Mononymic Retention. Get that extra spell gem. It is a game changer. Then do the combat agility and 
stability to increase your survival that is always at the top of my list always so then after that what I would actually get is the expansive mind AA that allows you to basically get mana a little bit faster you have to wait till level 66 to get that but it's definitely very useful let's see at level 70 I would get color shock at 67 I would definitely get mind over matter and I wouldn't get noctambulate by the way I would save that to one of the last ones and then I would get mystical attuning especially if you're a raider you would need that extra five buff slots as well as planar power to increase your stack caps and if you do trade skills I already talked about that whatever trade skill you want to work on you can get those AAs I definitely suggest maxing out salvage as soon as possible if you do trade skills noctambulate is at the end mind of matter mind over matter is a good uh, oh crap basically so definitely get that early but I would get that after actually no I would actually get that before color shock sorry so I would get mind over matter then color shock uh, innate regeneration you can get that if you want again not high on the list but just get that when you can the scorn and defiance the same thing especially if you're a raider if you're a raider it's more important but otherwise get it when you can destructive fury is important I would get that next delayed death is okay if you're in a group if you're soloing it's really not going to help you all that much because the mobs will still just keep hitting you anyway and killing you but if you're in a group it is nice I've had it save my enchanter and my shadow knight on quite a few occasions so there are some glyphs you can look into that are available in this range I'm not going to talk about those too much you can look those up yourself and also you can get the trials of Madame Mirror basically you have to pass all six trials so that's definitely something nice it helps you get your resist up so and that is my video today I hope it was informative and if you like the content and want to see more I will do streaming on Sundays Mondays uh, right now Tuesdays until we beat the TOB expansion even though a lot of the raids haven't come out yet and possibly one other day during the week which I will be updating my schedule on my twitch page which I will link down below and if you want feel free to like and subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell to see when I upload my next one I hope you all have a great I am an EverQuest in Norath, and I'll see you then.